I'm gonna have a great day here in San Francisco's worst neighborhood, the Tenderloin. Now there is no question over which San Francisco neighborhood is worst. It is clearly this one. Some lists even say this is the most dangerous place in the country. And that's because crime here is basically legal. Police don't issue citations, they don't report crimes, and when there are obvious drug deals or violence going on, they look the other way. And you will see some of that later. So while the statistics show this neighborhood is bad, we have no idea how bad it really is. The Tenderloin has been called the largest open air drug market in the world. It's said that you can get cheaper fentanyl here than anywhere else. And that is just part of what makes this place so dangerous and full of crime. The Tenderloin also happens to be the epicenter of homelessness in San Francisco. And San Francisco might be the epicenter of homelessness in the country. Plus, there is no debating that this neighborhood is very, very dirty. But is that really all the Tenderloin has to offer? I don't think so. This is not gonna be one of those San Francisco sucks videos, even though they are really popular and they take place mostly in this neighborhood. Instead, I'm gonna visit some of the best places in the Tenderloin because there are a lot of really great places here. And there's another side to this story that you haven't been told and you deserve to know. So hit that like button and sit back. We're gonna find out if you should visit the Tenderloin, starting at what I like to call the Eastern Gateway to San Francisco's worst neighborhood, the Powell Street cable car turnaround. This is City Hall, the southern gateway to the Tenderloin. This place is funny because it's both one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city and right on the edge of the worst neighborhood in town. This guy is screaming unintelligibly at the tourists waiting for the cable car. Technically, we are not in the Tenderloin yet, but if you're a tourist, you are almost obligated to come here. Plus, it is really fun to watch the employees turn the cable cars around. Personally, I think this is the least interesting place we're visiting today, but I was over there a few days ago. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Technically, this is the dividing line. That's not the Tenderloin, and this is. And we are going that way. But don't fall down there. Next stop is coffee, and the Tenderloin has a location of one of the most popular coffee shops in the Bay Area, Phil's. Phil's is a really cool and unique coffee shop, so even if you don't go to this one in the Tenderloin, if you're in town, you should visit a Phil's. We're going there later. But it's still early and we're gonna check out the bar scene later. As we ease our way into the TL, you have to know some history. The neighborhood is full of architecture and historical sites that will make your trip more exciting. Today, the Hibernia Bank is just an event space, but it was made famous years ago because another branch was robbed. Down the street is the YMCA Hotel. This is one of only a few in the country that were ever designed to be exclusively a hotel. The Tenderloin used to be the center of nightlife in San Francisco, and this was the site of the Blackhawk Jazz Club. The club hosted a ton of famous musicians, including Miles Davis, Dave Brubeck, and Billie Holiday. Today, that tradition lives on. The Tenderloin is still a hotspot for live music and clubs. We'll see more of that later. This is the Cadillac Hotel. Before it closed, it housed one of the oldest boxing gyms in the nation, and some of the more famous boxers that trained there were Sugar Ray Robinson, George Foreman, and Muhammad Ali. There is so much history in this neighborhood that I am just not going to get into. If you wanna know more, the Tenderloin Museum is a great place to get educated. And the museum also happens to be across the street from this viral news story. Now buckle up because this story is a doozy. A local photographer bought a bunch of fancy new and very expensive camera equipment and locked it in his car right around the Oakland YMCA. His car was then broken into and all of that camera gear was stolen. But fortunately, he had some tracking devices inside of it. The photographer tracked his stolen goods down to the 300 block of Leavenworth. This is the Cadillac Hotel. This is the 300 block of Leavenworth. And right down there is the Tenderloin Police Station. So this seemed like great news. He called the cops and let them know that his camera gear was a block down the street. And they said, yeah, that's a known fencing operation. If you haven't heard of a fencing operation, neither had I. Basically, that's just a place you can take stolen goods to sell it and get cash. And in this case, the police said there was nothing they could do. It is a wild story, and a lot of stolen goods do show up in the Tenderloin. But frankly, this says a lot more about the state of San Francisco and policing than it does about this neighborhood. If there's one place in the Tenderloin you must visit, it's Vet Sally. Frankly, before I made this video, I was a bit nervous. Would I find anything cool? Would the people there be upset that I was filming? Is it safe? Then I met Amos. 
I've made a lot of videos about a lot of places in the Bay Area, and Amos is the only person who ever came up to me first. He's a veteran himself, and he helped start this art project where other veterans can come and paint murals in the alleyway. Don't hesitate to stop by and say hi. Personally, I can't wait to go back. I saw something else unique in Veterans Alley. People just voluntarily cleaning up the street. They're not getting paid for it. They weren't associated with the city. They just wanted their neighborhood to be clean. And this isn't the last time we're gonna see that. It is really easy and popular to dismiss the TL as some dump, but that misses the point. This is Bodecker Park and Amos said I should stop by and I'm glad he did. It's a clean, safe space for the community to gather, play games, and for children to hang out. That is one of the fanciest rooftop bars in the city. I believe it is called Cityscape. I didn't know it at the time, but right outside the park, I ran into this man, who I believe is known as Uncle Ralph. For the past seven years, Ralph has been cleaning this stretch of the Tenderloin. He doesn't get paid, he does it because he wants to. Some say Ralph's decision to live on the street makes no sense. But it is a choice that he's made, and local businesses and community members love him for it. He has managed to do, as one man, what the city cannot. Keep the street clean. The issue of homelessness in the TL is a big one, but you already know that. What you might not know is that the food scene in the Tenderloin will shock you. In the past few years, sadly, a number of places have closed. The Tenderloin is the best place in the Bay Area to get soul food. This used to be Rusty Southern, and sadly, it's something else now. But right around the corner is the most famous soul food restaurant in the entire Bay Area. This is Brenda's French Soul Food. It's basically impossible to get in here on a weekend. But if you get the chance, this place will not disappoint. But time is tight, so today I'm getting pizza. And for that, I'm going to Otisite Pizza. Otisite is the type of place that isn't supposed to exist in the Tenderloin. It's frequented by the sort of people that aren't supposed to be in the Tenderloin. And that's because their pizza is incredible. The restaurant itself is decorated more like a hipster cafe than the delicious holes in the wall that this neighborhood is known for. If you find yourself by City Hall, you're just a block away. So you should go here. I'm not a huge theater guy, but if you are, this is the place for you. The Golden Gate Theater is currently showing The Wiz. A lot of the theaters have closed. But the TL is still the theater center of Northern California. This is the current theater, which is right next to the Remby Theater, which is part of the American Conservatory. This is the Great American Music Hall. Some of the famous people that played here are the Grateful Dead, Billy Joel, and even Robin Williams filmed his HBO special inside. The Grateful Dead have also played at the Warfield. And who hasn't played here? Louis Armstrong, Bob Dylan, Slayer, The Clash, Nirvana, Adele, the list of people that have just keeps on growing. I had absolutely no idea that there was a garden in the Tenderloin. But let's check it out. Well, unfortunately, it's locked. Down the street from the garden, next to the cop car, are these people. Drugs are a huge issue in the Tenderloin. Speaking of that, this is the Phoenix Hotel. It's famous for all the rock stars that used to stay here. If you like karaoke, you can sing, drink, and dance at Pandora. This is probably the most famous karaoke bar in the Bay. I've been, it's cool, but I always preferred the place next door, McKellar Bar. Sadly, it closed down a few years ago. And despite plans for the new owner to open a bar, it doesn't look like much has happened. San Francisco is often criticized for being overly expensive, but you might be surprised to know that the dive bar scene here is still very good. This is Emperor Norton's booze land. That's the emperor himself. And this place has the best happy hour of any place I've ever seen. It's a solid six happy hours. There are a ton of amazing bars in the Tenderloin. Some of them have changed. If you're in San Francisco, should you visit the Tenderloin? Everything you've heard about it is true. One resident told me this is definitely a place in crisis. It can be really dangerous here. At the same time, I am so glad that I came here. This place is complex. It's cool. I met some really interesting people and I would not hesitate to come back. If you visit, you will see the homelessness. You will see the drug use, but you probably won't feel like you're in any danger. And that's because the people that live and work here really care about this neighborhood. But you are more likely to be the victim of a crime over the bridge in Oakland. So you can check
check out this video to see what it's like over there. And if you're still curious what this building is, check out this one. I'm not sure if you should visit, but I will definitely be back. Thanks for watching.